May only God's word be spoken and only God's word be heard. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, God's living word. So, the gospel this morning contains another one of those well-known parables in Luke. This one, sometimes called the parable of the rich fool. But in fact, the parable occurs within another story. It's a story of Jesus preaching on a hillside or on a plain. And as he's speaking to the crowd, a voice cries out, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. And Jesus says to him, Who set me as the judge or arbitrator over you? And then he says to the crowd, Beware of being too greedy. Don't place your stock in the goods of this world in an abundance of possessions. And then he tells them the parable. It seems to me that that first little bit that voice out of the crowd contains the key to understanding some of the dimensions of this parable. Because he says, and it's peculiar for this time, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. It's about distributing an inheritance. But in the society in which Jesus lived, and indeed in most societies where subsistence farming has sustained the lives of most people, no one ever divided an inheritance. Now, that seems strange to us who live in a time where there's equity and we believe in fairness, and where parents might well uh, share uh, their uh, legacy equally amongst their children. That wouldn't have been the case then. Because somebody who was a subsistence farmer had enough land to support his family. If he divided that inheritance, he'd have two sets of grandchildren who were at risk because they were hungry. Whereas, if the inheritance was held intact, then at least one family would be able to survive. One sees uh, in history uh, that pattern all the way through. Um, it continued to be the law within every commonwealth country uh, with respect to inheriting the throne until very, very recently. And I'm not entirely sure if they've got universal consent yet from all of the, the, the required countries in the commonwealth. But the notion that an inheritance was passed intact and not shared was a survival tactic, and certainly very much part of the world in which Jesus lived. And of course, the prodigal son, the other parable where somebody says, give me my inheritance now, uh, a younger son who wasn't entitled to any of it under the rules of that time, um, raises an interesting question. The same question we find here. You see, the rich man in that parable behaves as if he is the sole inheritor 
of whatever he can gather. Forgetting that every other human being on the face of the earth is equally an inheritor. And so this call to make my brother divide the family inheritance with me, a, a, an uncharacteristic kind of request in the time of Jesus, sets the table for this story of the rich fool, the tycoon who, who says, wow, I've got so much that I can live forever, but you know what, I'm getting more. So I'm going to build bigger barns and tear the old ones down, forgetting that he, like all of us, is mortal. And that he, like all of us, won't get to keep whatever we collect forever. In fact, he is told in this parable that this very night your life is being demanded of you. So all of this wealth you've gathered, whose will it be then? And I think this parable speaks to this whole concept of distributing. That's, that's why uh, the evangelist puts that in question, which may have come up at some time directly and reports it directly before telling this parable. Because this just isn't about somebody who's greedy. And we heard in that letter that was read from Colossians this morning, that greed is a form of idolatry. That being greedy means you're placing something above God. And that that's not a healthy thing to do. It seems to me this parable invites a little further thought. That greed is partly wrong, not simply because it puts something above God, but also because it takes something away from some other people. In a world where there's barely enough to go around, somebody having way too much means that somebody else has way too little. And if indeed the resources of this earth belong to every one of us equally, if we are indeed all inheritors of the human condition, what does it mean when we have too much? It probably means somebody else, somewhere else, has too little. And it seems to me that's why that first question, it precedes this parable in the Gospel. Because it isn't just about being greedy. It isn't just about having too much. It isn't just about the, the absurdity of someone who's about to die building bigger barns so that they can eat, drink, and be merry. It's also a clue to making you think, well, oh, wait a minute, what's going on in this story? And that parable ends not with his possessions being passed on to his survivors. It ends with the question, whose possessions will these now become? And that, I think, is the question that this Gospel is asking us all to think about as we collect and amass and end up with way more than we might ever need. Whose will all of this become? And who will finally inherit? And what 
is the price of that kind of acquisition. And that question about distributing an inheritance, I think, sets the table for those questions. So as you think about this story, and I hope you do across this next week, think about that question. You know, there are people right here in, in Caledon or in Dufferin County who don't have enough. There are people who don't have much shelter. And yet all of us, all of us probably have more than we actually need. And it's only when acquiring too much more than we need that I think the question, the moral question begins. That reading that Jim read from Hosea earlier raises the question of people whom God treated like his own children, who, who treated them like someone who lifts an infant up to their cheek, who, who gives them bread, who turns away from that truth, who turns away from the fact that they indeed have been cared for. And God indicates that there's a kind of judgment that comes with that. But there's also at some point a kind of realization that comes with that that uh, we need to recognize in some manner. Loving God means loving others. Serving God means serving others. Caring for our world means caring for others. We care for our world because the others who will most benefit are not those around us right now, but those who will come after us and will, like us, be inheritors of the planet. So it seems to me that this, as much as this is about the foolishness of a man building barns on the very eve of his death and acquiring more when he's never going to be able to use it, it also raises this question of inheritance, question of to whom does the wealth of the world finally belong? Does it belong to the handful who maybe are advantaged by the place they were born or the accumulated wealth of the families that have gone before them? Or does it in some way belong to each and every one of us? And if it does, what does that tell us about how we might behave? And I suggest that that's something that, uh, that we might all think about in this coming week uh, as we think about the world around us and enjoy this wonderful summer weather and the benefits of living in this part of the world. Think of just a little about who out there has less because we have more.